Welcome to ACI, the Network Made Simple learning series. In this video, we will cover Module 4, Configuring Layer 4, Layer 7 Services, Chapter 1, Integration and Configuration Overview. When users access an application, many may have the perception that the communication path between them is direct. However, behind the scenes, the reality is a bit more complicated, since the connectivity path often includes redirection to firewalls, load balancers, and many other services we need to preserve security, visibility, and scalability capabilities just to name a few. Inserting the so-called L4, L7 services in a traditional network would often represent multiple challenges, since we would commonly have active standby or cluster pairs even in multiple locations, which would require to be stitched to the network on a per device and per port configuration basis, and either in routed or transparent modes, extending each VLAN or VRF to those devices. Not only does this make the network configuration harder, but it also complicates traffic flows and network troubleshooting. In addition to that, adding or decommissioning any of these L4 or L7 services without disruption is usually a major challenge. At this point, you are already familiar with ACI and how to configure the network and its policy from APIC, which is the main responsibility for a network admin. As you add your firewalls, load balancers, and other L4 or L7 services, there may be different admins for each of them. Or, in some cases, the same admin may have to configure both. But regardless, ACI can integrate those services in different ways. We could manually assign each interface of your L4 or L7 service, whether physical or virtual, to their corresponding EPG. But ACI can do better, and this is where additional automation and features can be leveraged by configuring our L4 or L7 integrations using a feature called Service Graphs. By using Service Graphs, as we will learn today, we will be able to automate service stitching, simplifying how we can scale out, decommission, or optimize L4 L7 services as seamlessly as possible with integrated monitoring capabilities, plus many more. When using ACI, you may integrate virtual, physical, container-oriented, or even cloud-based L4 L7 services to your ACI sites, which may include firewalls, load balancers, and IPS IDS appliances, just to name a few. Just like in traditional environments, ACI supports one-arm and two-arm configurations, which refer to the number of interfaces you may want to use to connect your L4 L7 device. We commonly see two-arm configurations in firewall environments, where dedicated inside and outside interfaces are required for security purposes. However, one-arm configurations, which are popular for IDS, IPS, and load balancer systems, may also be applicable to some firewalls if supported by the firewall vendor, making incoming and outgoing traffic flow through the same interface if desired. We can insert our Layer 4 Layer 7 services using service graphs by leveraging our well-known five logical network configuration steps. We will do this as part of step 4, where we define how we want different EPGs to communicate by using contracts. Contract configurations not only allow you to permit or deny traffic based on rules, but we may also mark, log, copy, or redirect traffic as well. And this last couple of options are enabled by using service graphs. We may redirect traffic to specific service or service chain in a service graph by simply applying such service graph on top of a contract, which will redirect the traffic to the desired service or service chain before it reaches its destination EPG as part of your design policy. Just like in traditional environments, we may integrate our L4 L7 services in multiple ways. For example, service graphs can work in routed mode, which is also known as go to or even peer against the fabric as a layer 3 out. In this case, we could use the firewall as the gateway for each EPG subnet if desired, or use any cast gateway in our ACI fabric and then configure features like policy-based redirection in our graph, sending interesting traffic to the firewall's IP as we will see later in this chapter. If routed mode is not the desired option, we may also configure a service graph in transparent mode, which is also known as L2 or go through. This way, we could preserve the same subnet across different EPGs while still segmenting at the firewall level through different VLANs. You could add a similar approach with layer 1 mode or inline, which would simply be a bump in the wire for your inter-EPG traffic. This is useful when integrating devices such as IDS and IPS to name a few. Now that we know the generic terms for L4 L7 service integrations using service graphs, let's now cover the different options ACI has for us to implement them. The first one is commonly known as a managed or network policy mode. 
and that means that ACI will automatically stitch your networking surfaces. However, the L4L7 device configuration will still be performed locally on such device. This is by far the most adopted model since we usually have different personas managing the network and the L4L7 services. The second and third options are known as Service Policy and Service Manager, which require a specific type of software loaded on the APIC called Device Package. The difference when comparing these two with the first option is that in addition to just stitching your L4L7 services automatically, APIC will also configure the L4L7 device as well. This is why the device package is needed, since it contains the function that each device can perform, whether Cisco or third party. Although this may be useful for those environments where the same admin manages both the network and the L4L7 service, it is important to mention that device packages may only contain around 80% of the overall device functionality. Therefore, you may end up sacrificing some features, especially when working in service policy mode, since the configuration of such L4L7 service will only be possible through APIC once integrated. If you still want to leverage the device package functionality, the service manager mode option provides a more flexible approach by allowing some configurations to be performed locally on the Layer 4 Layer 7 device console as well. Depending on the Layer 4 Layer 7 vendor, different integration methods may be available when using device packages. This is why we have a fourth option, which leverages APIC's northbound API capabilities and integrates to multiple ecosystem partners by simply adding an application to either the APIC or the Nexus dashboard allowing Layer 4 Layer 7 services automation capabilities without the device package. With this in mind, this learning series will only focus on unmanaged and application-based deployment options, since they are the most popular and flexible nowadays. Let's start by leveraging how to configure Layer 4 Layer 7 services insertion using unmanaged mode. Our current environment is very simple. We have a web and database CPG, each of them with a dedicated bridge domain with 1111 and 2221 subnets respectively behaving as any CAS gateways. We also have a contract that is allowing all traffic between them and there is no layer 4 layer 7 service inserted at this point. Let's confirm this by going to our APIC where we can see our application profile called My App. Both EPGs are associated in this case to a VMware VMM domain and communicating through an all traffic contract. If we click on the Web EPG operational tab, we can see that our web server VM with IP 1112 has been learned and is associated to this EPG. The same is displayed on the database EPG operational tab, where we have our database VM with a 2223 IP address in this case. As we mentioned before, the ACA fabric is currently behaving as the default gateway for both subnets, using 1111 and 2221-24 as anycast gateway subnets defined in their corresponding bridge domains. We can confirm this by going into each VM settings, and if we ping the web server from the database VM, communication succeeds as expected. We will leave that ping running, and we'll go back to our diagram, since in part 2 of this video, we will now insert a firewall between both EPGs. We will go through every step to achieve this, using service graphs in unmanaged mode. And after that, we will go through other topics like PVR configurations, some concepts around layer 4 layer 7 in the cloud, and many more. So, please feel free to click on the next video to follow up on these topics.